Today, we're gonna talk about farming, door knocking, canvassing, or as we say in the industry, geographic farming, and why it's gonna be important for you and your career to get more listings. We're also going to talk strategy, how to pick a farm, how to set it up so you are consistently top of mind, how to pick it based on if your competition is there and other things that you need to consider in terms of providing value to the residents so you are thought of first when they think about making a move. And make sure you stick around till the end because in the second half of this video, we're gonna be talking about the things that we use, the things that we send out, the messages on our postcards, on our campaigns, our stakeholder guides, things that you'll want to see so you could use in your business as well, in your farm. Now, we are located in the Bay Area and the majority of the consistent inventory holders, the people that list a lot of properties, are farmers. And that is why it's important for you to establish yourself in your niche, as we would call it, in the neighborhood that you choose to target. I cannot personally think of any other way for you to establish yourself as a strong listing agent. When it comes to targeting potential sellers, or as we would say, homeowners, most companies like Zillow, Redfin, all these online sources are targeting buyers. So farming gives you a way to purposely be in front of potential sellers so you can build a bigger business. And as we say, when you do have one listing, it typically leads to another transaction, which could be a buyer that walks into open house, or a buyer that calls off your sign, or a seller that loves what you did to this specific property and wants to do the same to maximize the amount of money they could sell for. Now that you know the importance of farming, I'm gonna share with you some things to look out for when it comes to selecting a farm. There's three places you're gonna look for data. Number one is a tool like Broker Metrics, which your agency might have access to. It's gonna give you stats on different agents and different companies. Secondly, it's going to be directly from the MLS. You're gonna look at data based on turnover. And third, you're gonna contact your local title rep or your attorney for information on specific items of specific neighborhoods, absentee versus owner-occupied ratios, so you can plan ahead to understand what people live in your farm. Now I'm gonna share my screen so you can see exactly what I'm looking at and what I'm researching, and that way you can go to your back end to take a look at those specific data points as well. So one of the first places you're gonna look for data is programs that are similar to what we're gonna be using here called Broker Metrics. In Broker Metrics, it compiles data across the local MLSs, if you have multiple, depending on your county and where you're located, and it's going to give you some options to search based on a lot of variables. In this specific one, we're going to be selecting our MLS. We're gonna look at all residential properties, and we're also going to look as far back as about three years of data. So what I'm gonna be doing here is, I'm going all the way back to 2018, January, to year to date, as we create this video, the end of January 2021. We're gonna select cities for the area, and I'm gonna look for the city that I'm looking in is called South San Francisco. And once I select it, I'm gonna click search. As it populates the information, what you'll see is, you'll see listing sites, and then you'll see sell sites, which are buyer representations. It will also tally up the number of total representations and units and a total volume of representation for this time period for each respective agent slash name record. As you can see, at the total, there are 1,228 sales throughout this period. And also, if you look at the total of the per agent record, if you do some quick math, you'll be able to determine the market share that these people have. This also gives us an idea of list to sales price, which at times you will, at the, at the moment of negotiation and at the listing presentation may come handy 
if you know who your competitor is so that you can compare and share with the seller your list of sales price if it's better compared to your competitor. The other thing that you can look at as well is your average days on market, which will also come into play, especially when you're competing against other agents. Now I know I'm only showing you one location and one data set based on a specific time frame. However, it's going to be important that you compare multiple areas to figure out which one is truly going to be the best for you to break into so you can get results faster. And that's how I would use broker metrics or an equivalent tool so you can do some research and you're going to combine it with the other two, which is the MLS and also title rep information that you can obtain. So one of the places you're going to look for some data is the MLS. Now in our MLS, there's a lot of search functionality, but I'm going to show you the specifics so you can look for what we want. First is you're going to go for the status and select all solds. You're going to look for close of escrow. I'm going back for a full year so we can see who's represented sellers in the most recent 12 months. Next, you're going to select the city and let's say you live or you're servicing a very big city. You're going to want to also search the area. For our sake, our city is 70,000 people. And I think that is a good enough search criteria to start with. So as I go through the bottom, you'll see how many matches and there's perfectly in the last 12 months or so, 500 matches for solds that have sold. Once I click results, I'm going to get different search displays. And the one that I want is one that I created where it displays the list office and the agent data. Now what I'm wanting to look for here is if there's any consistent names. Now if there's 500 homes at Seoul, I'm looking for the most consistent name that has represented most of the properties that have sold. I'm going to sort it by alphabetical order and I'm going to scroll through. As I scroll through, I'm going to see consistent names such as this Annie person, this Antonetta, uh, Betty Taish, uh, which has represented six sales in the last 12 months, David Healy, David Tapper, and I'm going to search through. I want to look for the most consistent person. So this Joanna de Rowenda represented five. And what you're looking for is who are these people that have more representations than others? And that typically suggests they do something similar to farming in maybe a micro neighborhood or the whole city. Lee Ginsburg with six, Lisa Carson with five, Michael Soon with four representation, Nancy Jen, Philip Watson, and you're just gonna look through Stanley Lowe with four, and who's this Wilson Leon guy? This guy has represented probably 20 in the last 12 months or so. And if you do see someone that has represented a big percentage of market share, you're most likely going to go against that person if you're going for an appointment. So why is this important for us? We want to make sure we understand the competition. There's other ways to research things such as list to sales price, such as average days on market, as you click through on the specifics of this representation. So for example, in this case, Wilson Leung, and I want to click through, I can look at stats and I can see his average list to sales price and also his days on market and other information that you might want to share with a seller once you get to that stage of having an interview. So that's how I would use the MLS. I would make adjustments to the search if I wanted to look for a specific neighborhood, for example, and that might give you more data that is relevant for you, especially if it's a city of 70,000 people, 16,000 residential addresses, how do I get that information? I'm also going to ask the third, which is a title officer, to give me some information so I can cross-reference from the MLS, from broker metrics, and also from the title represents, representations list to see what do I see 
in terms of what's relevant as I select my farm. So once you have done this research on the MLS, it's going to be important for you to look into micro neighborhoods and see if you have friends, relatives, family members, or if you walk your farm, if you see people leaving behind flyers or postcards. You might want to reach out to a local resident or a friend or family member to figure out if they are receiving any sort of marketing pieces or solicitations from other people. Because most likely, if these people are getting consistent listings, they're doing something in this geographic location. It's not gonna be a coincidence that they do get more than your average person's listings when it comes to the neighborhood that you're targeting. Now we're gonna start talking about the actual farming campaign. In the farming campaign, you want to be what we call consistent in delivering your message. At a very minimum, you should be delivering your pieces once every month or 12 times every year. And what that looks like is whether you are physically out there, which we call sweat equity, you putting in the time and not necessarily paying someone, which we call check equity to make sure that someone delivers it on your behalf, USPS, a kid in your farm that wants to make an extra buck. So let's go back to the actual pieces. The things that you're going to send out at the beginning are going to be consistent every month. What that means is if there's a thousand doors, each door gets something from you every single month, every 30 days. You need to make sure that happens. Otherwise, if you do it for six months and you lapse one month, two months, it's not going to work. You're not gonna to be top of mind, which is the most important thing you want to establish in your farm. You're delivering something of value, whether it's relevant to them at that very moment, but what you want them to remember of you is that you are attempting to do something good for them by giving them information, giving them uh, invitations to certain events that you're hosting, telling them exactly what's happening in the neighborhood, in the city in terms of planning updates, or letting them know what houses are selling for because it might be relevant for them. Now we're gonna be talking about value pieces that you can provide to the areas that you're farming. Specifically, we're gonna look at something that we've created called our South San Francisco Stakeholders Guide. And in this is going to be items of value that we've determined our residents likely will keep this guide because it's gonna to be top of mind and they might revisit this at a later time. So when we think about value, it really needs to come from a place that will the consumer believe that this is something that's gonna be relevant to them. Whether it's market updates on what's recently sold, property values, or it might be planning updates about what the city is doing, or it could be virtual or in-person events that you're hosting whether it's picnics, movie days, or it's educational events, home buying workshops, selling workshops, home improvement workshops. This is an all-in-one guide that we've created, and it's not to say that you need to create something this elaborate when you start your farm, but it should give you an idea that once you've been doing it for some time and you've started to calculate that you are getting a return on investment for your time spent and your money spent in your farm, this is something that you may decide to create. Now let's dive into it. So on the cover is a drawing, thanks to our marketing team, of the city hall of our city. As we flip through it, you'll see on page one, it's going to be a letter to the resident. And then on page two, we have contents of what is featured in this guide. Page three and four are specifics of who our team are and the individual members and how diverse we are. And secondly, on page four is our statistics on our representations and, our, and what we've done in the neighborhood. Now on page five and six, we have specific market stats for the neighborhoods in the city that we're sending this guide to. And on seven and eight, we have something called our home improvement program where we feature a specific property and look at before and after photos and we talk about exactly what we did to improve that property, which gives consumers an idea of what we could help them with when it comes to resale as well. On the next two pages, 
are some of our notable representations of properties we've sold in the neighborhood. And if you don't have a track record, you should always ask your brokerage and the agents in your brokerage to be able to utilize some of the sales that they've had. As we flip through, next are the city planning updates that might be relevant to the neighborhoods that you're sending it to because neighborhood neighbors, because neighbors are always curious about what's happening in their city. Next, we feature a local restaurant, and luckily for us, they actually have been featured as top 100 Yelp restaurants of 2020, which is pretty cool. Next, we have some testimonials from our clients to all of our agents. And last, we have a timeline of events in case someone wants to intimately know a little bit more about our business and who we are, because we wanna draw a connection even before we have a first conversation. We want to share with everyone exactly what we do for our community, and it's not just helping them buy or sell when they need to, but more so the things that we've done to promote community, feature to residents, share the story of the city and what's going on. And this is something that we send to our farm. Now guys, I want to make sure that you understand, you don't need to send a multiple page booklet. You could send any one of these topics that you find in the booklet in the form of a postcard, because if we're talking about quantity and quality, quantity and consistency is more important than one quality piece that you could send all year round. And there we have it guys. In this video, we talked about the specifics on researching for a farm, the benefits of the farm, what to look out for when you are doing the research, the tools you use for the research, the campaigns, the frequency, and we hope you found this helpful because in the next video, we're taking you on the field to make observations, what to say, how you should display yourself with body language, and when you do interact with people, what's actually gonna happen and the follow through for that. And of course, the one part that we can't forget is a mindset part of the whole process of farming and how you could succeed. Look out for the next video and thank you so much for joining us.